welcome to SciShow Tangents. It's the lightly competitive science knowledge showcase. I'm your host, Hank Green, and joining me this week, as always, is science expert and Forbes Under 30 education luminary, Sari Riley. Hello. And more importantly, it's our resident <laughs> everyman, the adorable Sam Schultz. I think I'm more important, too. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I think a really important question that everybody needs to know is do you guys have a grocery store? I was told when I worked for Walmart that it was it was like 10 times harder to get somebody to come to a new grocery store than it was to keep somebody oh. coming to the Walmart. So if we ruin that relationship with that customer, that will be it'll be 10 times harder to ever earn that trust back. And it's amazing that they that they were giving me that level of responsibility, but they really <laughs> did. <laughs> have you had your trust earned by a grocery store? Does that mean you have to screw up 10 times worse as a grocery store to mess up the relationship too though no, i don't think so i think you can mess okay. up very easy this is a, in general uh, a ph phenomenon of trust it's all about yeah, building the trust bank and it's very mm -hmm. easy to spoil it i despise going to other grocery stores than the one that i go to you have like one that you love yeah i go to food farm of course like any normal person should go to food farm <laughs> Even though it's a <laughs> disgusting place. It's, it's not disgusting. <laughs> has bad selection. There's the free, there's the, like the weird food shelf, not there's free food weird, shelf, but the weird food free. shelf in the back. There is a extremely inexpensive shelf that is yeah. next to the weird food shelf yes. where you don't get to choose what's on that shelf, but whatever it is, there's something wrong with it. And it's basically free. <laughs> Nobody else wanted it for some reason. They also yeah. have a really cheap meat area. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, this stuff's about to go, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like the plastic bags of basil uh, that they just Ooh, pin up next those. to the other mm -hmm. uh, just herbs basil. and vegetables. Yeah. It's like this mm -hmm. came out of someone's backyard and I yeah. love it. Who yeah. knows where that stuff came from? They could do almost anything and I wouldn't yeah. stop going there. That place is so great. And currently they have the best chicken sandwiches I've ever had in my life. I don't know if you ever. I do have those chicken sandwiches. Yeah. No, I try to not eat them because they're so good. And I think they're dang good. They're so good. They're even good like at the end of the day when they've been sitting around for five hours. Totally. Uh, but th there's other objectively much better grocery stores in town. But when yeah. I go to them, I'm just like, I don't like to be here. I like yeah. to be at Food Farm. I like to be at Food Farm as well. Have you ever gone to the bathroom at the Food Farm? No, I'm scared to. I've looked back there and thought, yeah. I know that I've seen people go back there. I've been like, what's going to happen to you? I've done it. As you'd expect, I've everywhere I've ever been, I've gone to the bathroom. <laughs> How is it? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a lot. It feels intimidating. It's like, all right, <laughs> like, well, well, you've welcomed me into the inner sanctum. I must yeah. respect this space. You're in there. It's clearly there. not meant to be for normals. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm being tr trusted with a, a, a sacred space. It's just for all of the painfully cool, disaffected teens who work there. Yeah. Terry, do you have a grocery store in Boston? I, well, I'm kind of like by... By where I was raised, a Costco loyalist, which <gasps> listeners of the wow. pod know. Oh, of course. Uh, of Kirkland, course. Washington, Kirkland yeah. brand, Costco, yeah. wherever I you go, are I have a Costco Kirkland membership. brand, basically. Yeah, I am Kirkland mm -hmm. brand. As far as like local grocery shopping, though, we have to drive a little ways to go to a Costco. It's like 30 or 40 minutes away. Oh, wow. Um, That's a lot. We used to be a Wegmans household because my partner's <laughs> from upstate New York. And so land of Danny Wegman. We would go to Wegmans, but now we don't live by Wegmans anymore either. So we're now we're stop and shop. We've switched loyalties based wow. on convenience. But yeah. I think the the one in my heart is Costco, where we will drive a distance to go to Costco as opposed to other big box warehouses. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of equidistant to a like fancier grocery store that I would never <laughs> <laughs> switch allegiances to. I met people who used to work at that grocery store and then opened a similar grocery store in Boston. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Yeah, they because they were missing the bulk food section. There there aren't a lot of like bulk, uh, food, bulk food places. Is nice. Yeah, to buy in in Boston, and so now <laughs> bulk food always is. It seems it seems like a bit of a, a magical mystery to me because you like it doesn't come. As I mean, I guess it arrives as bulk food in that it arrives outside of as much packaging, but it still arrives yeah. in boxes and stuff like it still comes in packaging. Uh -huh. But I get to pick I get to pick exactly how much I want. The problem with that is I actually always pick more than I want. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the largest I mean, amount of like loose nut you can ship is legally? 
<laughs> like a big box. I don't know. Somebody listening, somebody listening has to know the mm-hmm. largest amount of loose nut that you can ship. You can join our <laughs> Patreon, join our Discord, message us there. But we do need to know what is the max loose nut. Yeah. Subject line, loose nut, all caps. I bet it's different for different nuts. Like a shelled cashew uh, is probably very different from like unshelled walnuts. Tariffs are going to get you for sure, though. I bet you could fill a shipping container with just loose nut. If you were brave enough. If you're made of stern enough stuff, you can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I say I want to buy in bulk, I mean, I want to buy in bulk. <laughs> if you're able to tell us how much a shipping container full of loose nut would cost, also, I'd be curious to have that information. Every week here on SciShow Tangents, we get together to try to one-up a maze and delight each other with science facts while also trying to stay on topic. Our panelists are playing for glory and for Hank Bucks, which I will be awarding as we play. And at the end of the episode, we're going to have a winner. One of these people's going to win a game. But first, as always, we're going to introduce this week's topic with the traditional science poem. This week, it's from Sari. I'm going to hide you guys because I think you for this to be it. funny, I'll have to do it really earnestly. And I can't look at your face. Oh, I love you, gosh. but I, I cannot look at your faces or my own. <laughs> uh, and Tuna, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, some is oily, some is wet. It is salty. It comes out when there's a threat. Why do we swim? Super weird, somebody up. The only word you didn't change. I would like to someday understand. And we will leak, we will, we will perspire, we will. I would like to someday understand. We will see if we will, and we will ooh. Why do people sweat? Why do dogs sweat? Why do horses sweat? Why don't fish sweat? Why do people sweat? Why do cats sweat? Why don't snakes sweat? Wow, a science musical interlude. You know, there are actually a couple different kinds of sweat glands, in humans at least. We have eccrine glands, which produce watery sweat, and apocrine glands, which secrete oils and other stuff near hair follicles, starting around puberty. Oh, my time's almost up. Gotta go. I would like oh, to no. talk about skin. When we get hot, we drain stuff from within. Pretty weird, somebody else. <laughs> now it gets swept up by the breeze. I get cooler and my heat starts to ease. Super weird, somebody else. Well, I would like to someday understand. And we will leave, we will, we will perspire, we will. I Someday understand, and we will see if we will, and we will ooze. Why do people sweat? Why do monkeys sweat? Why do camels sweat? Why don't birds sweat? Why do people sweat? Why do hippos sweat? Why don't frogs sweat? all you got. Is it over now? <laughs> that's yeah. all. That's all. That was, that was it. That was the whole song. <laughs> There's another. This is a four and a half minute song. It is a long song. It is a long song. Can I ask you? Can I ask you real quick? A couple of questions. <laughs> sorry, song. I'm what? Sorry. What? What exactly were you saying in the in the little parts? Oh, I just was making that half. That song is just made up words, and so yeah. I said pretty weird, and then zubbida. <laughs> and then <laughs> the super yeah. weird uh-huh. I, I kept with the same yeah. syllables so that yeah. I wouldn't mess it up too much yeah pretty funny to change every single word of the song except that <laughs> one word <laughs> That would be That's funnier. Hard to do. Yeah. So the topic of the day is sweat. Something. But before we get into that, we're gonna do a quick ad break, and then we'll be right back. Why 
All right, Sari, welcome back. What is sweat? Oh, Though I feel like sing the song again, Sari. <laughs> yeah. Cue it up. We're going again. I'm done, right? I can leave the podcast. I like yeah. exerted all my energy for today. Dogs and cats sweat. Yeah, do- dogs. I've heard that dogs just sweat from the bottom of their feet. Is that right? That is right. Yeah. So, so hmm. humans are the sweatiest animals, and some monkeys and apes. In that, we have what? sweat glands all over. Our bodies. The, are you joking? We're the sweatiest animals. Does that surprise you at all? I'm constantly no, drenched I guess in not. Sw- there's just a lot of ways in which we're like, there's going to be a sweatiest animal. Yeah. And, and there's have and you like ever seen an animal just anywhere. One cl- animal. No, I've ne- I have <laughs> never seen an animal as wet as a human Nearly as close. playing basketball. Yeah, You're exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're pretty sweaty, and yeah, sweating is found in a wide variety of mammals, but mostly in other monkeys, apes, cats, dogs, it's on your paws. And I think Mm. they have apocrine Mm. glands there. So those are the ones that are like watery, but also more oily. And there's like a scent component to that, right? Yeah. And those those oils also have a scent component to them. Um, And anal glands on cats and dogs, I was looking up, also have modified sweat glands in them. So the, those secretions, those pheromone secretions are also sweat adjacent. Well, what, what, I mean, where, where does the line get crossed? Though, like, is, is like, are, are, are spiders sweating out silk? I don't oh. think so. I think are pe- there, are, there is are a people fuzzier sweating line. out milk? We are not sweating out milk. We're sweating out mostly water. Other guys sweat out milk, though, don't they? But, like, mo- like milk is mostly Kinda. water. It's the act of, so, like, I think milk... Milk is sweat. Milk is maybe milk is African sweat. glands too. Milk is milk is sweat. sweat? Milk is sweat. <laughs> milk is sweat. sweat. <laughs> milk is sweat. sweat. This is gross. Uh, they're modified drink sweat milk. glands. Oat yeah. milk isn't oh, sweat. No. <laughs> That's why you have to drink oat milk. You're drinking yeah. sweat otherwise. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I guess milk is milk is modified sweat. I think you can cool. say a lot of secretions are modified sweat. And when you talk huh. about hippo sweat, that mucusy stuff that is red and irony is. Mm-hmm from subcutaneous glands. So they're kind of like sweat glands, but they're not exactly the same as sweat glands and it's not exactly the same composition. So sweat generically is a term that means anything you kind of secrete on the surface of your skin. But then when you dial down to it, I think a lot of the ways that we define sweat is in relation to humans. Yeah, yeah. Because like all this like apocrine, like oily, like excretions isn't like when I think of sweat, I think of like the stuff specifically designed to cool off my body. Yeah. And so that's the eccrine glands. That's the watery, salty um, majority of glands in humans. We have like two to four million sweat glands found all over our skin, our palms, our feet, the hairy skin, like on top of our head, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then there are some more recently discovered, and by more recently, 1987, as opposed to like 1800s, um, apoecrine glands that kind of act like in between, where there's some watery, some oily, and and we don't really know. But We're just seeping. We're seeping all the time. We're seeping from all over Mm -hmm. the place all the time. And other animals seep less. I, horses, I know, get sweaty. They get frothy or something, right? Horses get frothy. Yeah, they have a protein called latherin, which is acts like a surfactant, like soap. And that's why they get oh. frothy on top. And I think it's specifically so that they can wet their fur. So they are pretty wet as far as animals go. But they wet their fur so that it can evaporate and cool yeah. them a little bit more. So they are all over sweaty in ways that many animals are not. Right. I'm going to go but, ahead and hold on to the potential reality that horses are sweatier than people. I don't want to be the sweatiest animal. <laughs> I think it's fun. All right. Superlatives are nice, but we already got a bunch, you know? We got so many things. There's some other stuff we don't have, like like jumping and running and stuff like that. Like everybody else is so much better at most of that stuff than we are. That I want to be wet. It's okay to be wet. I like that. But yeah, well, fish are wet, but they just don't sweat. They that don't, don't count. You know what I mean. Wet on land. Wet on land. I'm wet on land, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm wet on land, baby. And sweat's an ancient word. It must be an ancient word, right? Yeah. It absolutely is. Yeah. It's been basically the same throughout English and Germanic languages as far as we know from, from the proto Germanic language. It was sweitas, basically sweat. <laughs> and then it was just va- various versions of sweat or sweat spelled with an O, like swat throughout. Mm. Old English, Ooh, Middle I'm English. I'm sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> and for some reason in Greek and Latin, there are two different forms that I think came from the Proto-Indo-European Swede or sweat, sweat, 
So it came from the word for sweat, but in Greek, it became hydros oh. or hydros, which means sweat. And you see that in anhydrosis or hyperhidrosis, which are mm -hmm. like you can't produce very much sweat or you produce excess sweat. Um, and then Latin, it's sudor, which is like Spanish sudor. And um, if you have a medicine that causes sweat, you call it sudorific or sudatory. Oh. So we have, again, Greek and Latin words sprinkled throughout medicine. And those are the only ones, despite being everywhere, that don't kind of sound like sweat. But as far as we've been talking, right. sweat's been the word. Well, and then also the, I don't know, it's the, the country of Sweden uh, comes from the word sweaty. Sweat. Because they're just very sweaty people. They're sweating over there. <laughs> they are the sweatiest humans. The sweatiest humans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, actually know where Sweden is. One's own, referring to one's own, referring to one's own tribe from the tribal period, says Wikipedia. Thank you for correcting the record, Sari. It is now time to move on to the quiz portion of our show. Would you guys like to play Truth or Fail? Okay. You if you insist. Choice. Along with the wonderful cooling effects of sweat okay. often comes some strong smells. And while sweat is initially odorless, it does not stay that way for long. And what is a place that produces quite a bit of sweat? You know it. It's our feet. So today we're playing Truth or Fail Sweat Edition, where I present to you three stories about stinky feet, but only one of them is true. Don't believe You ready? Okay. Yeah. All right. Story number one. If you ever found spiders in your long, unused running shoes, they may have gotten there because of the sweat. There is a jumping spider in East Africa that supplements its sodium and moisture intake by consuming human yum, sweat. Yum. In order to test this, scientists set up two separate clusters of these spiders. One was regularly provided with freshly collected samples of human sweat. The scientists found that the spiders that were deprived of the sweat became tired and unable to reproduce, which they attributed no. to a lack of sodium. Oh, it's good eating. <laughs> but that might be fake. It might be story number two. Polar bears traverse a vast amount of sea ice within the span of a year, around 200,000 square miles of it. They also spend most of their time traveling alone. So how is it in a space that big that they happen to come across another bear to potentially mate with? Well, polar bears have a relatively high concentration of sweat glands in their feet that leave behind unique secretions on the sea ice. So scientists have hypothesized that male polar bears rely on these sweaty paw paths to track down possible mates. That's that cute. That might also be fake. So They're into feet. Number three. They're into feet. <laughs> They're not the only ones. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that can't sound on. like it's one of us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another mammal with a sweat gland covered feet is people. But have you ever noticed that some human feet are out there just being extra specially stinky? Our sweat from gland secretions is initially odorless, but undergoes a transformation into that body odor stank from bacteria metabolizing the sweat product. So a research team from the Osaka Metropolitan University Graduate School of Medicine sought to discover what it was in specific people's sweaty feet that made it such a powerful odor by sampling the skin microflora in body fluid samples from men's feet. Among other odor-causing precursors was the bacteria Staphylococcus hominis, which they were able to eliminate with a serum containing onion and peach extracts. So, the is it heck? story number one? The sweat-sucking spiders supplementing their salts. Story number two, polar bears following sweaty paw paths in the search for love. Or story number three, a new bacteria-infecting cure for extra stinky, sweaty feet. Oh, the spider one sounds so familiar to me. I think there are a lot of insects that supplement their diets with other stuff. Yeah, for sure. They're always hanging out in mineral-rich pools. We think that, like, oh, mosquitoes bite, but, like, every... You got to get your sodium from somewhere. You got to slurp yeah, up, yeah. whether it's from crave that like mineral. poop on any scale. Animals crave that mineral. <laughs> um, polar bears, we just talked about paw pads and how yeah. they've got a little sweat. Uh, I think, I don't know about bears, but I think a lot of mammals do. It's like their paw yeah. pads are the sweaty parts. I don't know how long things would stick around on the ice, though. That That is what's giving me pause. Is that how any animal find each other? How animals find each other? There's not a, a lot of them. Well, they do. <laughs> I think they do a lot of things like koalas rub themselves on trees like trees feel more 
like a stable place to rub your odor. You can yeah, see like your does Lilu rub yeah. herself on the edge of a, a corner or sure. something? Sure. She's trying to tell her friends where she's where she's hanging. Yeah. Yeah. Or pee, okay. poop. Okay. Yelling. Mm. They yell to each other a lot of the times to be like, I'm here. It's a mess. I mean, it's, it's not easy. It's ridiculous that we have made it so complicated, but it's just like genomic mixing is so useful that you got to do it. And the last one I bet is like onions make your pit stinkier, you know, something like that. I don't know. That one was just too much. I couldn't. It was really specific. Yeah. Maybe too specific or maybe exactly as specific as an actual thing would be. I don't know. That's what I don't know. It could be a different body part. It could yeah. be the same, but it makes sense. Like onions are kind of sulfury, maybe. Oh, sure. I don't know sure, what about sure. peach, though. Maybe there's like a sweetness. This makes it sound like I'm the guy who likes feet, but like there could be. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet peach feet. Yeah. Peach is nice, but also a little stinky sometimes. Yeah. You get it like, a, I feel like it is. Can be. I, I don't know if I can hang with you on that one. I <laughs> think the polar bear one seems wrong, but I'm going to go with it anyway. I don't know. There's just something about it that's like so simple. I'm going to go with the onion feet one just because uh, I feel that's like. That's a good one. That's a great one. Bacteria. Bacteria eating oils is what makes it yeah. stinky. And we just like found out what the stink is maybe. Well, fact number three was indeed inspired by the movie Holes. No. <laughs> what? They had a foot stink curing product called Sploosh. Uh, and in the uh, movie is made from a mixture of onions and peaches. Oh, wow. Oh, I, I was just talking about holes, too. Damn. <laughs> I was just talking about holes. Should have been that watching sucks. holes, not talking about Should've holes. Yeah. yeah. I was talking Story. about how I had seen it and a friend hadn't. I was like, it's so good. You got to see it. I better watch it again. <laughs> You're a fake holes fan. Yeah. That's so good. Story number two is true. The polar bears might also purposely tread on their urine in order to include it in their scent paths. Sure. Other kinds of bears tend to use things like biting or scratching trees to mark their territory, as we talked about. But the lack of such things in the Arctic sea ice led polar bears to other sweatier methods hmm. good job I you overthought guys. it you've been made a fool of Sari it was based on a movie <laughs> <laughs> it does feel mean now that I said it out loud. you lost all whatever the spiders uh, do not feed or, or eat the human sweat uh, but they are attracted to it they are the only known predator that specifically targets blood carrying mosquitoes as its preferred Prey. And since those mosquitoes are attracted to our sweat, the scientists went on to see if these spiders were attracted to that human odor. So they indeed are. They sniff out our sweat. Cool. Uh, there are also sweat bees. They're a different little bug. Uh, and they actually do eat human sweat for the moisture and the salts. So yum, it is yum. a thing that can happen. You guys sweaty? I'm sweaty. I'm always sweaty. I guess... I guess we're among the sweatiest animals on earth. I bet I'm in the top percentile of sweatiness, too. <laughs> I, I think I'm above average also, sweaty-wise. Yeah. As a person who grew up in Florida and moved to Montana, I feel like I'm never sweaty. Because I, I used to be wet yeah. all of the time. <laughs> so now when like there's it's like 80% humidity in Missoula, I'm like, I hate being sweat. <laughs> uh, that's like four days of the year. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I get really I get sweaty when I get nervous. Unfortunately, oh. get the anxious sweats. Are you nervous right now? I'm uh, always nervous. <laughs> 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 it's us. It's our own yeah. friends, not the podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have sweaty hands, and which did not help my self esteem. And then I did not date in high school, but when people <laughs> touch my hands, then. <laughs> You're so sweaty. Nope. <laughs> and I it did not help with my self-esteem, my self-confidence. Now I'm just accepted. I've I've reached acceptance that I'm sweaty. But yeah. stress. That, there's that there's that like holding hands time where it's like you both really want to let go, but like you feel like you can't, and it's just like become a whole ecosystem in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't hate you. Yeah. I'm just so wet. My hands just so wet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate stop. you. I'm just so we have to stop. So uh, Sam. You got a point. Next, we're going to take another short break. Then, the fact off. (laughs) 
Pleasure Tangents is brought to you by Bizarre Beasts, your monthly trip into the weird animal world. If you're listening to Tangents, it's almost guaranteed that you like weird stuff and gross stuff and slimy stuff and smelly stuff and amazing stuff and unbelievable stuff. And I'd also willing to bet that you have a more than a passing appreciation for the animal world. And hey, you probably also think that science is pretty neat. So I got a show for you. Bizarre Beasts, a YouTube series hosted by Sarah Suda and me. I'm Hank Green. Each month, we introduce you to the new weirdest animal you've ever heard of. Mice with Wolverine style bone spikes, bugs that are born pregnant, the biggest animals, the smallest animals, the stinkiest animals. Animals, maybe the sweatiest animals, which is, I think might be us, unfortunately. Even some well known animals that you only think are normal. Like, you will not believe how weird horses are actually are once you take a look and also they might be the sweatiest animal we're not sure once you're done learning about that month's animal also you can sign up for the bizarre beasts pin club and you can see behind me i got all my pins in that shiny case there if you look in the video i got so many pins over the years of various kinds because i love pins but the bizarre beasts pin club sends you a pin of that show's animal every month and you also have a random chance every month of getting a rare variation of the pin could be a glow-in-the-dark version maybe gold-plated maybe glittery it's a surprise. And the Pin Club directly supports the show. So not only are you getting a cool pin, but you're making it possible to keep making more episodes and also more pins. So head over to Bizarre Beasts on YouTube to learn more about the weirdest little guys on the face of the earth. And also you can go to complexly.store slash beasts to sign up for the Pin Club and check out more Bizarre Beasts stuff like sticker packs and scarves and t-shirts and more. SciShow Tangents is brought to you by Rocket Money, a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. Holidays. We love them, don't we? Special days like Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, maybe some beef days. Days when we get together <laughs> with friends and family, have some fun and food, and most importantly, get the day off work. Yeah. It's nice to have those days to look forward to on our calendars. But in these modern times, there's another not-so-special day that we can expect to roll around at least once a year. Subscription streaming service price increase day. <gasps> no. It all seemed so convenient back in the early days of streaming, didn't it? Just a few bucks a month yeah. to watch every episode of The Office whenever you want to. What person in their right mind would say no to that? But flash forward a few years and it's not such a pretty picture. Mm. These streamers have us in a stranglehold. If I want to watch The Office now, I'm easily paying several hundred dollars a month or more. And what's worse, sometimes I just plum forget I'm subscribed to a streamer in the first place. There are just so many. Thankfully, we have Rocket Money, a bright beacon in these dark times. <laughs> Rocket Money gives you a clear view of your subscriptions and your monthly spending all in one place. Finish every episode of The Office and find that you don't need that streamer anymore? Cancel your subscription with just a few taps. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. And all of those people are going to start a brand new holiday, the day Rocket Money saved them lots of money day. So stop wasting money on things you don't use and celebrate the day Rocket Money saved them lots of money day for yourself. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash tangents. That's rocketmoney.com slash tangents, rocketmoney.com slash tangents. All right, everybody, it's my favorite part of the show. Get ready for the fact off. Our panelists have brought in science facts to present to me in an attempt to blow my mind. And after they have presented those facts, I'm going to pick which one I like the best. And then that person's going to feel exceptional and special. And the other one's going to feel just awful. It's terrible for the whole rest of the week. But uh, to decide who goes first, I have a trivia question. So we were talking earlier about how uh, plants can't sweat, but they kind of can because there's evapotranspiration, which moves water through the plant and converts it into water vapor. And in that process, both the plant and the land they are on gets cooled. And NASA has, on multiple missions, studied that evapotranspiration as a gauge of surface temperatures in agricultural areas. One mission that ran on the ISS from 2018 to 2023 was called the Ecosystem Spaceborne Thermal Radiometer Experiment on Space Station, or EcoStress. 
<laughs> An eco dress on space used a high resolution thermal radiometer to track evapotranspiration to measure both the surface temperature and water vapor emissivity of various areas in primary temperate agricultural zones on Earth. The goal was to get increasingly precise measurements of how water availability impacts surface temperature and plant health. How precise an area could EcoStress measure with its radiometer? Let's do it in square meters. Uh, uh, 20. <laughs> 20. That's no really idea. small. Uh, 200. Good job, everybody, for guessing quickly. The answer was about 2,500, Sarah. <laughs> okay. Good job. Um, uh, the, the actual size is 130 by 230 feet. It's about 2,500 square meters. Mm. It's about a half the size of a regulation soccer pitch. Also, plants can regulate how much they sweat through their stomates. So if the soil is too hot and dry, they can close those down to prevent evapotranspiration and ultimately conserve that water. Good job, you little guys. They're so smart. Good job, plants. Good job. Yeah. I would love to be able to do that. Be like, I'm anxious, but I got to conserve. Yeah. I got to yeah. suck up my hands really quick. Like, <gasps> give me 10 yeah. minutes. I got to hold hands with a babe. Are you yeah. kidding me? I can't be sweaty right now. <laughs> I got to hold hands with this hot tamale. So <laughs> suck it in. Terry, what you got me? What you got me? So a couple men, a dog, and some raw steak and eggs sat in a room heated anywhere from 110 to 260 degrees Fahrenheit Ooh, to prove a it. point. Ooh, and uh, this hot. is not a locked room mystery or the setup to a very weird joke. It was a series of experiments on heat transfer and thermoregulation that showed how humans are very good at keeping ourselves cool in part because of sweat. This was in 1774 and 1775 when the word scientists didn't really exist. And instead, lots of wealthy white male natural philosophers who were fellows of the Royal Society of London would do experiments because they could and then talk about yeah. them. So many of those scientists don't grace our textbooks, but they were there doing science all the same. Like Dr. George Fordyce, who, quote, procured a suite of rooms and those rooms were heated by fiery ovens in the floor. And he invited some other men over to, quote, observe the effects of air heated to a much higher degree than it was formerly thought any living creature could bear. Um, and this, I'm not a guy, so this is like a normal hangout with guys being dudes, right? That's pretty much what we always are doing. Yeah, we're cranking up the electric heaters and we're <laughs> yeah, sitting in the room until we can't sit in there anymore. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good to know. It's been happening since at least the 1700s. And the main documenter of these experiments was Dr. Charles Blagden, a British physician who also participated in the room sitting. Um, their first few trials started at lower temperatures, like 110 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, where they would stand in a hot room and just measure how hot they got with a thermometer under their tongues or in their hands okay. or in yeah. their pee. Also, normal things you do with your bros. This is important. <laughs> Honestly, this is important stuff to do. We don't know how <laughs> bodies work. Let's get them hot and see how hot the pee gets. <laughs> see how hot the pee gets with your buddies. Oh, the other yeah. doctors. Why is the pee important? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and then you compare how hot your pee gets. Like, does my pee get hotter than yours? Aww, Whose pee gets cool. hottest? Yeah. Who's get embarrassed because your pee is the coldest pee. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. I don't know. Maybe that's winning. I don't know. Yeah, you Didn't got really powerful thermoregulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they repeated trials with increasing temperatures to 140, 210, or 260 degrees Fahrenheit, where they got really sweaty, but their body temperature stayed around 100 degrees max. The heat felt worse when they moved around than when they stood still, and the heat felt better with clothes on than when they took their coats and shirts and whatnot off. So you just get <laughs> half naked with your bros and then see who gets half? hottest yeah, we or sure not. That is half... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then you pee. Um, <laughs> but even in that trial where they took off their coats and shirts, Blagden wrote, quote, after five or six minutes, a profuse sweat broke out, which gave me instant relief. Hmm. So they basically concluded from these experiments that uh, they phrased it like the body has a power to destroy heat. And that mm. sweat played a considerable role, though it wasn't the only thing keeping them cool. They also tested, as I said in the setup, a dog by putting it in a 220 degree room in a basket oh. to protect its little paws for about mm -hmm. 30 minutes, checking on the basket every so often. And they noticed that it didn't sweat on its body. They like put a thermometer there and they were like, there's no sweat. But it did pant a whole bunch and a lot of yeah. saliva pooled around it. So they were like, this is the equivalent. 
And to prove they weren't cheating and the room was actually hot, they stuck some eggs and beef steaks in there. The (laughs) eggs cooked in 20 minutes and the different beefs were dry after 47 and 33 minutes. They were grilling. They invented grilling. Yeah. The dead (laughs) stuff cooked. The the live stuff stayed cool. It'd be interesting if if uh, they're, they're like they put the steak in there and like and also steaks apparently can keep themselves cool. You yeah. don't know <laughs> when you're first doing the science, you got to test it. Got to test it. And so basically, they did a lot of weird sweat experiments to learn things, yeah. which I'm sure like different people knew intuitively from saunas and whatnot. But these yeah. guys wrote it down, and their papers are really funny, so they got some credit. I have several questions. <laughs> I have maybe some answers. There are a lot of weird quotes. Yes. So so did did they have some thought about what was causing them to cool off? I think they thought it had to do with sweat. Well, yeah, yeah. And I but think like they why? maybe had some ideas about evaporation. There was another okay. experiment that was less funny where they put in water and then water with wax over the top to see how the water evaporated. And so mm. I don't know if they knew exactly about sure heat transfer out of that because they were also saying that their breath was cold when they blew on their finger but they did they were getting some somewhere in the there is a transfer of heat going on yeah and something to do with like sweat out of our bodies is affecting how cold we feel my second question is so like there's there's the that like age-old question of like who would you most want to have dinner with in the world (laughs) but i think a better question is who would you most want to have a hot sauna sweat pee with in the world like if you could have a person be a part of your pee naked pee sweat experience (laughs) If you had to compare the temperature of your pee with one other person after spending 20 to 40 minutes in a hot room with them. (laughs) (laughs) This is the new hot one. Jesus, of course. (laughs) Yes. Obviously. I mean, I would do it. Is this is this weird? I would do it with you guys for the content. We could Hell say yeah. like we do we got some pee. I'm we, not peeing absolutely. with you guys. I'm sorry. I won't be, <laughs> be okay. peeing with you guys. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Sarah and I are ready to pee with each other. <laughs> Sam. We've only been podcasting together for years. Four years, five yeah, years, on, whatever. Man. We've only known each other for like a decade. <laughs> we're not, All we're right. not, you can like go in you can go in to the corner. Okay, yeah. okay. If I can go into the corner, there's nobody okay. I'd rather do it with than you guys. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> what I, what yeah. I will say is there's not anybody above you on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I the have thing. to do it, I might as well do it with my good friends. And then we can eat some eggs off the floor when we're done. <laughs> yeah, we can have steak and eggs Hot afterward. Floor. Hot floor ouchies. <laughs> Hot floor ouchies, <laughs> dry steaks. All right, Sam, <laughs> can you beat that? If I had to guess, I would say that sweating is, for the most part, a good thing to do. It cools you down. It probably does a bunch of other good things, too. I thought we'd have talked more about them at this point. But <laughs> does it do other good stuff but cool you down? Oh, is that a real question? It <laughs> yeah, mostly sure, cools yeah. you down. And okay, like, that's plenty of that. I don't know. S- smells can yeah. be good. But when a lot of people think of sweat, they don't think of it as a positive thing. They picture a wet, stinky armpit bleeding through their dress shirt when they're giving a presentation in front of a big new client. How embarrassing. You'll never Mm. land that contract with sweaty pits. Luckily, antiperspirant was invented to help people sweat less. Put super simply, antiperspirant is deodorant that has aluminum-based compounds in it. These compounds stop sweating in a couple of ways. They react with water to make some kind of gel plug that clogs sweat ducts. And also, the compounds, the aluminum just kind of gets stuck in the ducts, clogging them up, and now you're dry. But antiperspirants are pretty controversial in some circles. The idea of putting aluminum salts directly in your sweat gland is pretty visceral if you think about it so it makes sense that maybe people will be worried about it and the safety of antiperspirants is a constant topic of debate scientific study and scary myths i don't have any business weighing in on the antiperspirant debate so i will just leave it at some people don't want to use antiperspirants but maybe some of those people who don't want to use aluminum-based antiperspirants still don't want to be sweaty So what are they supposed to do? In 2020, a team of researchers at Virginia Tech were thinking about just that problem and they had a thought. Your sweat is already full of all kinds of crap like urea and calcium and even a salt that isn't aluminum salt. Salt? And all of this stuff could, (laughs) in theory, plug your ducts just as well as any other solid. But wouldn't you know it? 
it's all dissolved up in your sweat, so useless for that purpose. So what this team decided to do was devise a way to evaporate sweat before it left your sweat ducts, thus leaving behind all of the minerals and junk in your sweat, clogging up the ducts with all the natural stuff. So in order to do this, the team created what they call sweat rigs, which were just really like thin glass tubes that emulate sweat ducts by having fake sweat pushed through them by pressurized gas. Isn't it crazy what we have to do to make like the body, like what the body just does? We got to be like, yeah. Bleh. So right outside of the exit of the glass sweat ducts, they put down a layer of propylene glycol, which is, I think, the stuff that fog machine fog and vape juice is made out of. Mm-hmm. But it's also super attractive to water. So as the fake sweat seeped out of the tubes, the propylene propylene glycol propylene. sucked yeah. the water out of the sweat effectively drying up the sweat and leaving behind all of the crusty gross stuff, which clogged up the sweat duct. So they did it. Now on to human trials, they said in 2020, <laughs> but I couldn't find anything after that. So it, it worked on it worked on a bunch of tubes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, of course, aluminum salts might not really be that bad for you in the first place. And also in researching this, I started to go down a rabbit hole of people who said that propylene glycol is really bad for you too. So I guess the great what to put under your armpits debate will continue to rage on forever. When I was in high school, <laughs> I got a giant like clogged sweat gland in my armpit and I've never Ugh. used antiperspirant since then. Really? Yeah. Was it was it because of that or was it? I have no idea. It might not have been, but it was uncomfortable and I thought I had cancer, which is funny because it turned out at one point in my future a giant lump in my armpit would be cancer. I mean, this is this is such a I like I hear about this f- for some reason all the time. I don't all know if time. I just randomly run into people who talk about it, but Yeah, <laughs> I've heard like are. urban legends about it i've heard like there's like i was in medical school and i cut open a guy's armpit of a cadaver and it was just just full of deodorant and i was like no that's not the thing i couldn't be (laughs) could it (laughs) no (laughs) okay good i also i feel like it was in my health class they were like don't use antiperspirant with oh wow aluminum in it and so I was scared. I was scared straight from that, you know. <laughs> it's scared straight from the stuff that they sell at the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I needed to be scared straight from, you know, me <laughs> in high school. Yeah. As long as you can get like if you if, if it's rebellious to use antiperspirants, then maybe maybe they won't go on to the harder stuff <laughs> like cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have to choose between a couple of men, a dog and some raw steak and eggs that got hot in the room <laughs> that got naked, peed a little bit and stayed pretty cool. Or oh, no. Sam's of clogging your sweat ducts with your own sweat crusties solving a potential antiperspirant problem, but only potentially because no research seems to have been done since 2020. <laughs> yeah. It's good, Sam. It's good. <sighs> but it, but but ultimately it's what not, is twice as good is a bunch of dudes in a sweaty room. Hot. With a steak and eggs, torturing a dog and peeing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I know. I love early science so much. People just like figuring stuff out in all the weirdest possible ways <laughs> you you went into it in the with the lead sam but ultimately i think sari pulled this one out she sang a whole damn song she also sang a song which we don't give <laughs> points for the poems anymore but it was very good yeah. really wanted to make my friends laugh this time i don't know i feel like we've all been going through it a little bit <laughs> the funniest yeah. part was when you started the second verse <laughs> 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 yeah you thought it was gonna be over and then <laughs> Here we go. And now that means it's time to ask the science couch. We've got a listener question for our couch of finally owned scientific minds. Tannerbot 2 k on Discord and Koniko Kagi on Twitter asked, how much waste do we release with sweat? I.e., I was told oh. there is some urea in sweat. What else is in it? Which other electrolytes or less expected things? That's an interesting question. I always hear, th- and I, uh, I always am kind of, maybe due to my own bias, discount this, that like you can sweat out toxins. And I'm just sort of like, my brain says, okay, I know roughly how sweat glands work. You pump ions across a channel and then it draws whatever is in the cells down the concentration gradient into the space of the sweat gland that is outside of your body. And in that world what i am imagining being drawn across the membrane is a hundred percent water but maybe 
that's not the case. Maybe hmm. there's some stuff in those cells that isn't isn't just water getting drawn across that gradient. I have no idea. Yeah, there's like some stuff in sweat, but I think from most of the literature, and I also am coming in with the bias of I, I, I'm skeptical of miracle cures or other things well, it's like just that. Like, like, like the idea of like this is how you get rid of the toxins in your body when it's like mm-hmm. no, like you have a whole a whole bunch of mechanisms for that and yeah. we're, that are very good at doing that. And also the idea of like our bodies being full of toxins is. It's definitely a scare tactic that people use to make you uh, be afraid that something is wrong with you and nothing is. Mm. And that's what I mostly found in the literature of of the papers that I read, which, I don't know, peer-reviewed seem trustworthy, is that s- sweat does contain a lot of things. Like there are measurements of uric acid, of urea in sweat, in addition to the water, the salts. Mm-hmm. Um, there are probably some hormones in there. There are probably some, like whatever is in your blood plasma has a chance of making it into your sweat because sure, it okay. gets excreted from the pores and then mm-hmm. some stuff gets pulled out before it reaches the surface of your skin. Like that's the whole point of glands is that you secrete mm-hmm. some stuff and then some glands squeeze extra stuff in, some glands cells pull stuff out. So there is some urea and whatnot, but compared to the systems in our body that are meant to get rid of waste and toxins. So in the case of pee, like, your kidneys, in the case of poop, your gastrointestinal tract, um, your liver does a lot of filtering and whatnot. Sweating excretes so few junk molecules relative to everything else. And in fact, if you are excreting hmm. a lot of urea through your sweat for some reason, something's probably wrong with your kidneys. Like, go to your doctor <laughs> if you if you think there's something wrong with your kidneys. But mm-hmm. that's the only situation that it would be coming out of your body a different (laughs) way because you already have a way to get it out. You already have your way to get like the waste products out of your body. And so in these studies where they measure sweat and they measure the concentrations of molecules and whatnot, the, the evidence of like selective toxin excreting is pretty lacking. And even though there are studies that are like arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury in sweat, a systematic review that review a bunch of studies. Mm -hmm. A lot of them recommend at the end of like, we need to research using appropriately sized human trials. And so there's like some evidence that in some people you find an equivalent amount of heavy metals in sweat as their pee or poop, but it's not, I don't know, not like significant enough. That being said, the whole the whole idea of like sweating out toxins, it's obviously been around for a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like sweat baths uh, have had a presence historically in lots of indigenous cultures, um, like North American, Central American, South American groups. We found like Mayan sweat baths and whatnot. And it appears to be some combination of like hygiene practices and social practices. Sitting in a hot room with your bros, like <laughs> goes back a really long time. Mm-hmm but also like spiritual practices, right? So I think that it is a little bit reductive and a little bit new agey to say the Mm. only reason to sit in a hot room with your friends is to release toxins, especially when there's not a lot of scientific evidence. But that's not to negate, maybe you just like it. um, And you you feel like less stressed sitting in a sauna and sweating Mm. it out. And that can be good for your health in other ways that don't have to do with like what is specifically being excreted out of your body you can just like feel relaxed with your pals as you pee together half night. <laughs> <laughs> for clarity usually in saunas you don't pee yeah <laughs> i've never actually been in a sauna so who knows I, 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 my I've one been in like one and i didn't pee i so you did I know. in case you missed our announcement from last episode. We're doing a new thing for our listeners on Patreon. We're going to answer a bonus science couch question. Sam, what is the second question? At Orbiting Wombat on Twitter and at Chloe Lily8833 on YouTube and Sky and Discord <laughs> and many others asked, what is it that makes sweat from stress smell different than sweat from exercise? If you want to hear the answer to that question, as well as enjoy all new episodes totally ad free, you can head over to Patreon. That's patreon.com slash scishow tangents. At our $8 a month tier, you get new episodes ad-free and extended shenanigans as we answer a bonus science couch question every episode. Also, you get a link to our private Discord server and maybe some more goodies in the future. Who knows? Also, we can keep making the podcast, which I love. Our patrons 
are amazing. And we are so grateful for you for supporting the show. If you want to ask the Science Couch your question, you can follow us on Twitter at SciShowTangents or check out our YouTube community tab where we will send out topics for upcoming episodes every week. Or you can join us on the Sideshow Tangents Patreon and ask us on our Discord. Thank you to everybody who asked your questions for this episode. If you like this show and you want to help us out, super easy to do that. First, again, patreon.com slash scishow tangents. You can become a patron and get all that stuff that we just talked about. Shout out to our patron, Les Aker, for their support. Second, you can leave us a review wherever you listen. That's super helpful and it helps us know what you like about the show. And finally, if you want to show your love for scishow tangents, just tell people tell about people us. Tell people about us. Thank you for joining us. I've been Hank Green. I've been Sari Riley. And I've been Sam Schultz. SciShow Tangents is created by all of us and produced by Jess Stempert. Our associate producer is Eve Schmidt. Our editor is Seth Glicksman. Our social media organizer is Julia Buzz Bazayo. Our editorial assistant is Tabuki Chakravarti. Our sound design is by Joseph Tuna Medish. Our executive producers are Nicole Sweeney and me, Hank Green. And of course, we could not make any of this without our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. And remember, the mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be lighted. But one more thing. Botulinum toxin A is produced by a bacterium and can be dangerous because it blocks the neurotransmitter acetylcholine from being released, which is a key part of how nerves signal other things like muscles. But in carefully applied doses, it's used cosmetically for medical treatments, and you might know it better as Botox. In addition to de-wrinkling faces by paralyzing muscles, Botox can prevent signaling to sweat glands to help treat patients with hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating that is impacting their quality of life. And there have been studies testing Botox ingestions for overly sweaty armpits, hands, feet, and also, I assume that you know what I'm about to say, butt cracks. Oh, have a beautiful butt crack as well when you're done. A nice, smooth, wrinkle-free crack. crack in the land. <laughs> Just don't put too much in or your crack, in your crack will go away if you put too much in, though. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, careful. You wouldn't want to have a, a unibutt. <laughs> no. Just a hole. Just a hole. <laughs>